Mark 11, verse 22, it reads, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, But whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. John chapter 10, verse 34. John chapter 10, verse 34. It reads, Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Say ye of him whom the Father had sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. Let's get to Exodus. Exodus chapter 6, verse 13. Exodus chapter 6, verse 13. Verse 18 says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron and gave them a charge unto the children of Israel and unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Exodus chapter 7, verse 1. Exodus 7 verse 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Still in the book of Exodus, chapter 8 verse 8. Verse 8 says, Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron, and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go, that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. And Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried unto the Lord. Verse 12. And Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, and Moses cried unto the Lord because of the frogs which he had brought against Pharaoh. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses. And the frogs died out of the houses, out of the villages, and out of the fields. Verse 30 of the same chapter. And Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses. And he removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. There remained not one. Hallelujah. Lastly, let's read 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4. I love scriptures. I can preach with scriptures only. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Hallelujah. May God bless you by the reading of his word. Praise the Lord. Like I said, I'm going to minister today on releasing the extraordinary. You know, we are so privileged in this year because of the prophetic word that we are moving with, stepping out into the extraordinary. Hallelujah. Because this prophetic word, it really describes who we are. Hallelujah. The Bible says we have got a more sure word of prophecy. But we do well when we pay heed and attention to it. As to a light that shines in darkness until the day dawns and the morning star rises in our hearts. So the prophetic word is a more sure word. Hallelujah. So in this year, we are stepping out into the extraordinary. 
And there is a way, there is a biblical way that we release the extraordinary into our lives. Hallelujah. There is a principle in the word of God that can help us to release the extraordinary. Hallelujah. I believe some are saying it's 1 July today, but I haven't seen any extraordinary thing happening in my life. I've come to encourage you today and give you one of the principles that you can use to release the extraordinary in your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So where we have read, uh, in, it, it, it comes from Psalms uh, chapter 82 verse 6, uh, which says, uh, I said you are gods uh, and you are children uh, of the most high God. And Jesus uh, made reference uh, to that scripture and he said, uh, is it not written uh, that uh, ye are gods uh, and you are children uh, of the most high God? Hallelujah. That's the principle I want to talk about today because we are gods, as the Bible says, we are gods. You know, when I was growing up in my Christian life, I used to think maybe it's blasphemy when I say I am a god. But I have seen it's biblical. Hallelujah. I am a god and you are a god. Amen. Amen. With a small g. The way it's written in the Bible. Hallelujah. I have said uh, ye are gods. And children of the most high God. Hallelujah. Say I am a God. I am a God. I am a God. I am a God. With a small g. A small g. Point to your neighbor. You are a God. You are a God. You are a God. With a small g. Hallelujah. This is very true because God has laid a principle in his word. When he created, when he did the creation, he laid a principle and he said everything will give better to its own kind. Everything will produce after its own kind. Hallelujah. And this is what we see. And God is a kind. God is a kind. The Bible says, uh, of his own will, beget he us by the word of truth. Of his own will, beget he us. He gave birth to us uh, through the word of truth. Hallelujah. So if you are a child of the most high God, it makes you a God. You qualify to be a God. Because you are a child of God and God gives birth to his kind. God is a kind. That is why you are a God. So it means you operate in the same way as God. Because you are a God kind. Hallelujah. When a God gives birth to a God, you don't expect the small God to behave like a dog. Because it's a dog, it's a God. Hallelujah. When something gives birth to its own kind, that kind behaves in the same way. Hallelujah. So as a child of God, you have the nature of God who is your father. You are the essence of God. You are a product of God. You are the offspring of God. Hallelujah. If you are to check your DNA, it is just like God. Hallelujah. Because you are God kind. In Zimbabwe, there is a program called DNA Show. Where people, if they are doubting their children, they go there and they test the DNA to prove if it is the father of the child. Hallelujah. If we hold a DNA show here and you are truly born again, it's going to be 100% positive. Hallelujah. Because you are a child of God. Hallelujah. The, the, your, your genetic makeup is just like God. Because you are born of God. But God has got a problem with another system which is running the world. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4 where we read it says, uh, 
in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers. Hallelujah. God has got a problem with the system that is running the world because it is another God whom they call the God of this world. Hallelujah. Who blinds the minds of the unbelievers so that they don't see the truth lest the light of God will shine upon them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But anyway, yes, there is a God of this world who runs this system in the world. The world system has the devil on top of it. Hallelujah. The world system of governance, which is called the cosmos. Hallelujah. The cosmos system of governance has the devil on top. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, do not follow or lust after the things in the world, the love of this world, the pride of this life, the lust of the flesh. All these things will pass away. And if you love those things, the love of God is not in you. Praise the Lord. God has a problem with the system which is running the world. The world economic system, the world political system, the world security system, the world finance system. God has a problem with that system. The education, the art system, because it has the God of this world on top. Praise the Lord. But we are in the same world. Praise the Lord. We are in the same world. Praise the Lord. That's why Jesus in John 16, he says, These things I've spoken to you, but in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And in the world, you shall have tribulation. The world is not your friend. Because the devil is the one running that system. And the devil does not like you. Because you have the nature, the substance, and the essence of God inside of you. That's why the world is going to persecute you. That's why you are going to go through tribulation in the world. When you go through tribulation, it is very normal. When you see nothing happen, you need to check yourself. Hallelujah. Because the devil has got a problem with someone who has the nature of God inside of them. In the world, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. And how does he do, how did he do it? If you I, what I was reading was John 16 verse 33. If you go to John 17 verse 14, he says, "I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them. Because they are not of this world, even as I am not of this world." How? Hallelujah. I have given them thy word. And the world has hated them. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the teaching last night. What the devil hates in you is the word of God. How does God make you survive in the world system, in the cosmos system? He gives you the word. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus says, I have given them your word. And the world has hated them. What does the word, the, the devil hate? The word. He has no problem with how you look. He has no problem with how you dress. He has no problem with how good you are. His problem is the word inside of you. He does not want the word inside of you. Because that's the weapon that overcomes the world. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Who overcomes the world? It is he who is born of God. He is the one who overcomes the world. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. 
And this is the victory that we have, even our faith. Hallelujah. And faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. It all begins with the word. I have given them your word. And the world has hated them. Praise the Lord. Be a man of the word. Be a person of the word. Hallelujah. That's the only way you can overcome the enemy. Jesus says, they are not of this world, even as I am not of this world. Hallelujah. He says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Hey, that's the, extra, that's the extraordinary we are talking about today. Saints, you are not ordinary. You are a God kind. You are in God's own class. Hallelujah. You are in God's own class of being. You are extraordinary. When they look at you, you might look the same. When they see you, they might look, they may think you are the same with them. But you are extraordinary. Inside of you, the real you is a God kind. Hallelujah. We may not see it with our eyes, but the real you is your spirit. As a man is a tripartite being with a spirit, with a soul living in a body. But the real you is your spirit, which is the one that gets born again. So let's see how do these systems operate so that we can know how we release the extraordinary. When you look at the cosmos system running the world, it works, it operates with the head and with the hands. That's how the cosmos operates. If you want to make it in the cosmos, you need to use your head and your hands. Hallelujah. But God brings a kingdom which is superior to the cosmos, which is called the kingdom. Hallelujah. He brings his kingdom and it's supernatural and it is superior to the cosmos. And how does it operate? It operates with the heart and with the mouth. That is the kingdom that we belong to. The business of the kingdom is done through the heart and the mouth. The business of the cosmos is done through the head and the hands. With the world system, you have to be strong. You have to be clever with the world system. That's why the Bible says, uh, not by mighty, nor by power, but by the Spirit of God. Because the world uses uh, mighty and power. It uses human strength. Uh, but God says, uh, this kingdom I bring here, it is by the Holy Spirit. Uh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And how does it operate? Uh, with the heart uh, and with the mouth. That's why you find also the Bible telling us uh, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. It says, uh, but to those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ uh, is the power of God uh, and the wisdom of God inside of us. This foolish plan of God uh, is wiser than the wisest of human plans. And God's weakness is... Uh, is stronger than the greatest of human strength. Do you know why the Bible refers to those things? It refers to the wisdom of human plans. It refers to the strength of human beings. Because the world system is run with the head and with the hands. Hallelujah. But God then brings a superior system and he gives us Christ inside of us and the bible is telling us christ has become in us the wisdom of god he has become in us the power of god hallelujah so that we may be superior to the world system because god's foolishness is wiser than man's wisdom hallelujah no matter how the world may think it's clever Hallelujah. They cannot reach God's foolishness. 
No matter how much the world may think is stronger, they may not reach God, they will not reach God's weakness. Hallelujah. And we belong to that system. That's how we override the world system. That's how we override the cosmos system. Because Christ has become in us the wisdom of God. That means we are wiser than the world. He has become in us the power of God. We are stronger than the world. That's how we step out uh, into the extraordinary. We play with a different set of rules. We don't, we may look the same, uh, but we don't operate the same way. Hallelujah. We don't operate the same way. We are wiser than the world saints. We are stronger than the world. No matter what the world may bring, uh, we are wiser and we are stronger. Hallelujah. And why is it like that? It's because we are gods. We are children of the most high God. We have the nature of God. Hallelujah. That's where the wisdom and the power comes from. And how do we operate in that kingdom? With the heart and with the mouth. That's why for you to get born again, the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus and believe that he raised it from the dead. Then you shall be saved. For with the heart you believe unto righteousness. And with the mouth you confess unto salvation. That's how this kingdom operates. That's how you release the extraordinary. You believe in your heart and you confess. If this principle is powerful to take you out of hell, what more of anything that you need? Hallelujah. This principle is the one that has taken you out of death and out of sin and out of hell. If you believe with your heart and confess with your mouth, then you shall be saved. But that's the beginning of the journey. Hallelujah. You continue living and operating in the same way. Hallelujah. Because you are a God. So in this kingdom that we belong to, the business of the kingdom is done through the heart and the mouth. Hallelujah. You are a God and a child of the most high God. When you go where we have read in the book of Exodus, the Bible says and the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron and gave them a charge unto, unto the children of Israel and unto Pharaoh to bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. And God says in 7 verse 1, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. Hallelujah. God has made you a God. When God makes you a God, he's giving you a mandate over his creation. Hallelujah. And God laid a principle in the beginning when he created men that he's going to have dominion. He's going to have authority. He's going to have, he is going to have oversight over the works of his creation as a God. Hallelujah. We lost that nature through sin. But when we received Jesus, we got that nature back. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So God has given us a charge as God's over his creation. Amen. He has given us a command. He has, he has made us to be God's. And see what Moses does. Because he has been made a God to Pharaoh. Praise the Lord. When there was the problem of frogs, Pharaoh comes to Moses and he, he prays to Moses and say, pray to the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people. Moses does that when he goes away from him. And the Bible says, and the Lord did according to the word of Moses. And the frogs died out of the houses. He did according to the word of Moses. Not to his word. 
When the swarms came again, where we read in verse 30, the same thing happened. Pharaoh went, he, he behaved deceitfully. He did not release them. And God sent swarms and, of locusts. And he comes uh, to beg again Moses. Uh, Moses does the same. And uh, he prays to God. And the Bible tells us again. And the Lord did uh, according to the word of Moses. And he removed the swarms. When God gives you a mandate, uh, a charge over a situation, he gives you authority over it. Hallelujah. When God gives you a mandate, hear me well. When God gives you a charge over a situation, over a nation, over a circumstance, he gives you authority over it. And he takes ownership of your words. Your words becomes his word. And the Bible says he watches over his word to accomplish it and to fulfill it. That's why the Bible is telling us, uh, and he did uh, according to the word of Moses. Hallelujah. Why? Uh, he had given him charge Amen. over the children of Israel. He had given him a command. He had made him a God to Pharaoh. God had made Moses uh, a God to Pharaoh. Hallelujah. So whatever Moses said, uh, God took ownership of those words. And he treated them the same way as his word. Those words became alive and active. And it happened. God watched over those words. Praise the Lord. When God gives you a charge, when God gives you a mandate over a situation, over a nation, over a, or, or, over a circumstance, he has given you authority to act in his stead. And whatever you believe and say, he makes sure it comes to pass. He takes ownership of your words. He makes them as his. Saints, I've come to tell you today, our mandate is to proclaim the kingdom. Our mandate is to proclaim the governance of God. Our mandate is to proclaim the life and the power of God. Our mandate is to proclaim the kingdom, the authority of God. God has given us that mandate. Praise the Lord. That is our mandate, to bring the kingdom. Wherever we go, we bring the kingdom. Praise the Lord. Whatever situation which does not align with the kingdom, we change it. To align with the principles of the kingdom. Praise the Lord. Because he has given us power, he has given us authority over those situations and we have power to change those things. Praise the Lord. But it only happens when we have the word of God inside of us. So you see when God comes to us, even through the Holy Spirit, he speaks to us, he gives us specific words for situations and circumstances. And we were being encouraged by the overseer, but when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, obey, be it the inward witness, be it the still small voice, the authoritative voice of the Holy Ghost, obey. Praise the Lord. Obey the word of God, because when God gives you a rema, when God gives you a spoken word, a rhema word over a situation, he's giving you authority to act in his name, to act in his stead. Hallelujah. It does not matter what the situation is. When you receive a word from God, it has to change. Hallelujah. When you receive a specific word for a situation, when you receive a rhema word and you obey the word, the situation has to change. Because why? God watches over his word. God watches over his word to perform it. He has never failed to fulfill any of his promises. Hallelujah. 
We can check the record. It is 100%. Praise the Lord. Have the word inside of you. John 15 verse 7 says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask whatsoever you will, and it shall be done unto you. If the word abides in your heart, that principle, when you speak, whether you are requesting, whether you are commanding, it shall be done unto you. We read Mark 11 verse 22. Praise the Lord. Which tells us, uh, which, which, which reads, uh, Jesus said unto them, Have faith in God. For I verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, uh, and be thou thrown into the sea, and shall not doubt, uh, but shall believe, uh, that whatsoever he saith uh, shall come to pass, uh, it shall come to pass. Why? Because you are a God. So even mountains listen. Even elements of creation, they listen to your word. They've got ears to hear. Mountains have got ears to hear the one who owns it. Hallelujah. When God makes you a God, when, when you are a God, a God is someone who has got a, a, is a personality who can create his own world. That's what I wanted. Hallelujah. A God is a personality who can create his own world and sustain it by whatever he says. Did you hear me? A God is a personality who can create his own world and sustain it by what he says. That's why Hebrews chapter, chapter 1 verse 3, it says it's about God now. The sun is the dazzling radiance of God's splendor. The exact expression of God's true nature. His mirror image. Hear what he says. He holds the universe together and expands it by the mighty power of his spoken word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know what? The reason why the universe is still going it's because God is still speaking. Hallelujah. The reason why we are still here, walking around and surviving, is because God is sustaining the universe. God sustains the universe by the power of his spoken word. Not by the way, not by, the, by, 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 by his power, but he says by the power of his spoken word. That means God is still speaking unto this day. To sustain the universe, to sustain the creation, God is still speaking. Hallelujah. Another version says he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. That's how a God operates. He can create his own world and he sustains his world by the spoken word. Because you believe uh, and therefore you speak. Hallelujah. Satan is the God of this world and he sustains it. We are in the system but not of the system. That's why he introduces uh, a lot of things. When you think you now know what he's doing, he brings another thing. It's his world. He sustains it. Because he's the God of this world. And he will never stop doing it until the end. Hallelujah. We are in the same world, but we are not of this world. We are superior to this system. Hallelujah. We are born of God. Whatsoever we say, it happens. We play with a different set of rules. Hallelujah. We have got power over the world. We are to exercise our authority through words. Saints, we are looking for men and women who can say, peace, be still. We are looking for men and women who can tell the winds, who can tell the storms, peace, be still. 
Because they know how the kingdom operates. Praise the Lord. That's the kind of men we are looking for. When the disciples were with Jesus, Jesus was at peace in the undercarriage for the boat. And the disciples were fighting the storms, fighting the winds. And they came to him and they said, Master, don't you worry that we are perishing. But Jesus was at peace. He was operating with the principle of the kingdom. And he woke up and he said, Oh, ye of little faith. Hallelujah. And he commanded the winds to die down and said, Peace be still. That's the generation of men and women we are looking for in our day. We are looking for a breed of people, a creed of saints that can say, Peace be still. Because they know their position. Because they know the power of the words they carry. Saints, we are designed to change the atmosphere. Whatever happens in the world, it starts in the spiritual realm. Whatever happens on earth, it begins in the spiritual realm. Because the earth itself came out of the spiritual realm. He commanded by his word and things came to be. So whatever we see begins in the spiritual realm. So we have control because we are spiritual. We have control in the spirit. Ah, do you get me? Hallelujah. We have got control in the spirit. Whatever happens on earth, it begins in the spiritual realm. And we can control it and arrest it there. Praise the Lord. We can control it uh, and we can arrest it there. That's why the Bible says, uh, whatsoever you shall bind on earth, uh, it shall be bound in heaven. Uh, we have control from above. We control things from the spiritual realm. Whatever we bind on earth, uh, automatically is bound in heaven. And whatsoever we lose on earth, automatically it's loosed in heaven. And if we agree on earth as touching anything, that we shall ask, it shall be done of our Father in heaven. Hallelujah. We have got control. Whatever happens here, we can control it from there. Whatsoever we bind on earth, automatically it's bound in heaven. We are here, but we are also there. Amen. Hallelujah. We have got a dual presence. That's why Jesus says, where I am going, you are also going to be. Praise the Lord. So we are, while we are here, we are also there. When we bind things here on earth, automatically they are bound in heaven. When we loosen here, automatically they are loosened in heaven. Because we are seated together with Christ in the heavenly places. We are ruling and reigning together with Jesus. Hallelujah. That is where we are. Seated at the right hand of God. The position of power. The position of authority. And we speak from there. Hallelujah. Because God has given us influence. He has given us authority. Praise the Lord. We are designed to change the atmosphere. We are designed to influence the mood of any place. As children of God, we can change and transform the mood of any environment. Praise the Lord. Because of the atmosphere of the kingdom that we, bring, what, that we bring. When you look at the life of Jesus. When he was here on earth. He was practicing the same principle. Praise the Lord. When they told him. That Lazarus is sick. The first thing that he said. Lazarus. The, when, when, when they told him. That he is sick. He said. This sickness is not unto death. But for the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Even when they told him that uh, Lazarus is dead, he says, uh, 
our friend sleepeth and we are going to wake him out of his sleep. To him, he was not dead. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. When you meet any circumstance, when you meet any situation, remember you have a mandate. You are a God. Say positive things first. Don't doubt in any situation. This sickness is not unto death. But it is for the glory of God. Even when they said he is dead, he said, our friend sleepeth. Let's go and wake him out of his sleep. When they told him about Jairus' daughter, that she is dead, he took authority over the situation. When he got there, people were crying, and he says, the damsel is not dead, but she sleepeth. I think people laughed at him. How can you say she's not dead? We can all see she is dead. But you are saying she's not dead and she's sleeping. Hallelujah. Even Lazarus, four days he had died, but you can say he's sleeping. After four days, he was even smelling. But he says he's sleeping. We'll go and wake him up. Because he was operating with the principles of the kingdom. What do you do when you hear there is a problem? What do you do when you hear that you have got cancer in your body? What do you say? What do you say when they told, tell you your mother is sick? They are critical, they are in the ICU. What do you say? Remember, you are a God. And the important thing about saying things, positive things first, because when the miracle happens in your heart, circumstances cannot stop it. When the miracle happens in your heart, because the business of the kingdom is run with the heart and the mouth, when the miracle happens in your heart, you believe the word, circumstances cannot stop it. No matter how long it takes. Hallelujah. It can take three years, it can take four years, but eventually, the truth will be established. Eventually, the truth will come to pass. Gehazi, go and check if there's any cloud coming up. He went six times, nothing. Seventh time, oh, there's a small cloud. Like a hand of a man. And Elijah says, oh, tuck your clock. And he says to Ahab, run because the rain is coming. Six times there was no sign. Facts, zero. Hallelujah. But when the miracle has happened in your heart, circumstances cannot stop it. On the seventh time, there is a cloud rising. Small like a hand of man. I say, Ahab, run ahead. The rain is coming. And the hand of the Lord came upon him and he ran ahead of the chariot and he arrived first in Jezreel. Praise the Lord. So no matter how much, how much time it takes, when the miracle has happened in your heart, circumstances will never stop it. Situations cannot destroy it. It may take some time, but the truth will come to pass. Facts will become the truth. You can go and check with the doctor so many times believing God. They tell you the tumor is still there. The growth is still there. Go back again. They will find nothing. The facts will become the truth. The facts will give way to the truth when you continue believing God and confessing the truth. So what happens in the middle of everything? You maintain your miracle with the spoken word. You hold fast to the confession. You don't change the confession. No matter what the circumstance, no matter what the situation, you don't change the confession. You hold fast to the confession. Hallelujah. Until it manifests. So when you receive a mandate from God, you are authorized to function in that area like a God. God has given us a mandate to go forth and preach the word. Go ye therefore and preach the word. 
That is a mandate. God has given us a mandate, saints, to preach the word of God. Praise the Lord. And he says, he that believeth and baptized shall be saved, but he that believe not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. What shall they do? They shall cast out devils. God has given us a mandate and a charge over devils. When you speak to a devil, it goes. Why? Because he has made you a God to it. Hallelujah. Moses, see I have made you a God to Pharaoh. And whatever Moses said, God did according to it. God has given you a mandate to cast out devil saints. When you are casting out a devil, remember you have a mandate. Remember you have a charge. God is begging you. All the hosts of heaven, they are begging you. Because you have a mandate. The devil has to go out. The devil cannot stand it. Hallelujah. And he says again, they shall speak with new tongues. Most of us, we speak in new tongues here. They shall take up serpents. If, if they, don't, they drink poison, it shall not hurt, hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. We were given a mandate, saints, over sickness and diseases. When we go and pray for the sick, they have to recover. Hallelujah. Don't just go and lay your hands in unbelief and you, you are saying, Kabanga, it will work. Kabanga, it may not work. You have a mandate. You are carrying a charge from God. Hallelujah. And God is watching over your word. We have got a mandate over sickness and diseases to defeat them. Hallelujah. The Bible says, you are of God, little children. Because you are God's and have overcome the world. Because greater is he who is in you than the one in the world. Greater is he. Praise the Lord. And when God, when God gives Jeremiah a charge and a mandate, he says, Then the Lord put his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord says unto me, Behold, I have put words in thy mouth. See, I have set this day thee over nations and over kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build and to plant. <laughs> when God gives you a charge, when God gives you a word of a specific situation, he has given you power to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build and to plant. When God has given you a word, when God has given you a specific charge, he has given you authority over nations, over kingdoms. He has given you power. When he has put, I have given them thy word and the world has hated them. Praise the Lord. Because you are there to root out and to pull down. Whatever you say goes. Job 22 verse 8 says, Thou shalt declare a word, and it shall be done unto you. And light shall shine upon your path. Hallelujah. When you make a decree, it shall be done unto you. Because you have a mandate. You have a charge, you have a command, which God has given you. So, Joshua understood this principle. Because he had seen it through Moses. He saw the principle working through Moses and he also joined the same kingdom because he believed God as part of the 12 spies. He brought a good report. Amen. Hallelujah. So when they were now fighting the enemy, hallelujah, because he now understood the principle of the kingdom and he saw that when he was fighting the enemy and the sun was going down, and he was avenging for his, for, to the enemy. What does he do? He begins to remember. Hallelujah. And he brings the same principle. 
Hallelujah. And he commands the sun and the moon to send still over Ajalon. Hallelujah. He says, you sun and you moon stand still. Hallelujah. Because he wanted to finish the war and avenge for the people of God. Hallelujah. He was now practicing the same principle. Because God had given him a charge. He had given him a a command over Israel. And he says, you moon stand still. When you understand the principle of the kingdom, that you have been made a God, even the elements of the universe, they listen. So when Mark 11, 22 says, thou shalt tell the mountain to move from where it is and be cast into the sea, you now understand why. Because even the sun listened to Joshua. Even the moon listened to Joshua. And they stood still. I believe that's why we have got 365 and a quarter days. We used to have 365 days. But because of Joshua, the sun and the moon stood still. And this has been recorded. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The elements of the universe, they listened even to Joshua. So everything that has been created, it has got ears to hear the ones who owns it. You can tell money what to do. You can tell money where to go. Hallelujah. You can tell mountains where to go. You can tell the sun and the moon to stand still and they obey. Hallelujah. Because God has given you a charge. He has given you a mandate. Hallelujah. You are designed to change situations. Hallelujah. And Joshua again, when he destroyed the walls of Jericho, in Joshua 6 verse 26, he says, Cursed be the man before the Lord that rises up to build the city of Jericho. In his youngest son, uh, he shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn. And in his youngest son, he shall set up the gates. And in First Kings 16.34, the Bible says, In his days did he the light build Jericho. He laid the foundation thereof in Abiram, his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof in his youngest son, according to the word of the law which is back by Joshua, the son of Nun. Thousand of years after Joshua had declared, whoever is going to build the walls of Jericho, they will lay the foundation in, and, their, and, and their, their, their firstborn is going to die and when they finish, their youngest son shall die. And thousand of years ahead, he rebuilds the walls of Jericho and he loses his youngest and then his oldest son. And the Bible says, according to the word of the law, which is spake by Joshua, the son of Nun. When Joshua spoke in 626, it was Joshua's word. But in Kings, it was now according to the word of the law. Spoken by Joshua. How, 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 how. God takes ownership of your word. When God has given you a charge, when God has given you a mandate, when God has given you a specific word, he gives you authority over situations. And when you speak, he takes ownership of your word. Your words become alive and active. Even one, after 1,000 years, the word will still be alive because you are a God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's how the kingdom operates. Even when he made a covenant with Gibeonites not to kill them. And when Saul comes and kills them, there was no rain in the land. And Saul so goes to Sacha and the Lord tells him, you have killed the Gibeonites. Why? Because Joshua had made a covenant. 
He had been given a charge over Israel. And Saul comes and kills them. And there was no rain in the land. Why? Because of the words of Joshua. And God took ownership of those words. When you speak with a divine mandate, your words take the character of God's word. They become active and alive. That's why we are going to stand before God for every idle word that we have spoken. Amen. Hallelujah. Words have got power. Words have got power. God has given us a mandate. Hallelujah. That's why Joshua could command, sun stand still, moon don't move. Let's rise to our feet as I finish. Moon don't move and sun stand still because he had demanded even the elements he had to listen. You are a God. You have the nature and the essence of God inside of you. Whatsoever you bind here on earth, it is bound in heaven. Whatever you say down here, it is heard in heaven. We are here, but we are also there. Praise the Lord. Our words have more power than we realize. If you are in tune with God and obey him, whatsoever you demand, it shall be done of the Lord. You function with that mandate. Even our parents, the Bible says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. That it may be well with you. That your days may be lengthened. Parents have been given a mandate and a charge over their children. That's why when you obey your parents in the Lord, it shall be well with you. So parents, when you speak to your children, remember you have a mandate. Remember you have a charge. Remember the words you say. They become active in their life. Speak well to your children. Hallelujah. Don't destroy your children. Speak positively. Hallelujah. Say positive things because God has given you the seat of Moses over your children. Hallelujah. I just want us to pray today. Amen. I just want us to pray today. And I want you as we pray today, just break the words, the cases that have been spoken against you, that may be blocking your health, your success, and your progress. Now that you understand the power of the word, the things that you desire and are believing God for this year, the extraordinary things you are believing God, you can speak them. You can make decrees. The Bible says, thou shalt decree a word, and it shall be done unto thee. And light shall shine upon your path. And if there is anyone in this place, maybe you are failing to make progress because of words which were spoken to you, which ring in your mind every day, and they are blocking your progress and health. The man of God is here. You can come and stand in the front, even as we are praying. There are words, there are cases, there are things, negative things spoken, which continue to haunt you and come to you and they block your progress. The man of God is here. You can come to the front and he's going to pray for you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we thank you, Lord, because you have given us a mandate. You have given us a charge. Even as gods, you have given us your nature, O oh God, even your essence, even the life inside of us. And we operate with the principle, O oh God, where we believe and therefore we speak we declare our progress we declare our extraordinary things into existence and into realities oh God in the name of Jesus we declare extraordinary health extraordinary progress extraordinary things in the mighty name of Jesus those, those who want to be prayed for you can come you can come if you want to pray hallelujah Riba ba sa ta ya mane, ribo sa ta ya, ye ke te 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 be, 
Mosi kataya handere moshita yama kataya haya mandere mosha li prosoto bahai riba baba sata ya hande moko sata mandere mosita li prosata riba baya andere mosita laha rekete terere mo masi kataya handere mosha mama hai we thank you Lord and we worship you in the mighty name of Jesus Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll ask the servants of God to come and pray for you.